وزدنا علما وعملا وحالا وفقها في الدين اللهم أنت ربي لا إله إلا أنت خلقتني وأنا عبدك وأنا على عهدك ووعدك ما استطعت أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت أبوه لك بنعمتك عليه وأبوه بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر في الظلام إلا أما بعد We left last week with talking about the station which is polishing or disciplining and I mentioned that, we talked about that, we mentioned that that was part of the, one of the most difficult things to do. Yani especially for the nafs. Taban discipline it has an objective. So there's no discipline without an objective. We don't want people to drink coffee or tea inside. So if you don't mind, I'm not gonna do that myself. And therefore, so tea and coffee inside, Chef. <laughs> If you don't mind, because once we allow that, it's always there. Where's Mulana Nawaz? Muhammad Nawaz. <coughs> it's nothing personal, I won't do it myself. And therefore, I don't think anybody is only fair. Mulana Nawaz, no coffee or chai inside for you or for me. And that means everybody else as well. It's only fair. Now, Barakallah Bikum. Hada, for your masjid, it's not for me. Yeah. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى وأن هذا صراط مستقيما فاتبعه. We talked about the صراط. No food and drinks inside is no no. I don't care who it is. Nobody. No matter how big the beard or the name. No. Period. With a nice way. Drinking outside. They can have biryani inside. Inside. And now once we do this, we can't do it. we can't change that. Now Barakallah, if it's Adam, care for your masjid. Okay. Bottles of water are worth it. Salat al-Mustaqim al-Fatabi'u. Salat al-Mustaqim means we, we what? We talked about it earlier today. Salat being Mustaqim. One time the Quran Kareem tells you, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمًا This is my Sirat, that's Mustaqeem. فَاتَّبِعُوا Follow it. Another ayah Allah tells you, إِهْدِنَ الصِرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمًا Guide me to the Sirat that's Mustaqeem. One, he orders you to follow it. One, he orders, the other one, he orders you to ask him to guide you to it. Another one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ Straighten your path on it. طبعاً الاستقامة, I tried to touch on it today, earlier today, in the khutbah, on the استقامة, on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لكن الاستقامة in the general sense means, what? What does it mean if I say استقامة in the general sense? What would you take from it? Huh? Patience. Steadfast. All right. Steadfast. Patience. On the on the trying to acquire or go on the way to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's one meaning or one one dimension of the meaning. Al istiqama to the ulama of saluk is very simple. Al istiqama is that you do not see anything but Allah. Steadfast is good. Patience is good. لكن اهدنا الصراط المستقيم guide me to the الصراط المستقيم means يا الله guide me that when uh, during my path of life which is a path of worship that throughout this whole path I don't see anything but you for once you see anything but him including his worship فاستقيم <coughs> You need to do istiqam. Because the point is that you don't see the worship, but you see the worshipped. Huh? Hadith Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you all know Hadith we talk about it. You worship him as if you're seeing, if you're seeing who? The ibadah? You're seeing him. 
And ibad has only means to seeing him. Therefore, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you that, when you say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, you're continuously in your salah trying to say, Ya Allah, guide me to that Sirat Mustaqim so that I less and less see other than you and I see you. Yani in the metaphorical sense, that's permissible and applicable to the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that's what we mean by Mustaqim. Other than that, Salat al Mustaqim may not really be Mustaqim. You know, if you're seeing everything else, it's not really Mustaqim. If you're seeing even your ibadah, it's not really Mustaqim. Like if you're seeing, if you're worshipping Him as if you're seeing Him, Hada Mustaqal. Hada Salat al Mustaqim. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet وسلم, in a commanding form, Fastaq Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Fastaqim. Notice, it's a, it's a difficult ayah, and difficult in the sense of the tone. <coughs> tone is very commanding, jalali. Fastaqim, Ya Rasulullah, do istiqama as you were commanded. That means to you and your ummah, teach them. Therefore, in another ayah to tell you that the Prophet Sallallahu there, in a sense, obviously he is, but he is himself the Sirat per se. Yani that path. Sirat Mustaqeem. Allah tells him, Wa in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Wa innaka, yani ya Rasulullah, Wa innaka latahdi ila Sirat Mustaqeem. Sirat Allah. You guide. You are Latahdi, you are the guide Ila Sirat al Mustaqim. That Sirat is what? What do we mean by Sirat al Mustaqim? Sirat Mustaqim means what? Sirat Allah. That you're seeing what? You're seeing Istiqama? You're seeing Sirat what? Are you seeing the Sirat that's the path that's Mustaqim? Or you're seeing the path of Allah? Notice how the ayah puts it. وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ صِرَاطِ اللَّهِ Because sometimes we miss the point, and that's why again, Al-Quran Al-Kareem tries to put it in different ways so you can see it. خير. We go طبعاً لأنه without the استقامة in the sense of الصراط المستقيم that you actually are taking the path to Allah, which is your life. Your life is the path. And you don't see anything but Allah, you're not going anywhere. You can worship for 300 million years. Makes no difference. <laughs> yani even if you see your worship or if you see what you're doing, all these things make no difference in a sense. On the sense of arrival, okay, that's the difference I'm talking about. The first level for the beginners, what, what does it mean to have a salat mustaqim or istiqama? Fastaqim. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another ayah, Inna ladina qalu rabbu, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna ladina qalu rabbuna allahu thumma. Yes, salam. Look. Look how the Quran comes. Allah tells us which means, or Allah tells us, Inna ladina qalu rabbuna allahu. Those who say, Allah is our Lord. But Allah said what? Thumma istiqama. Then had istiqama. What did we just say istiqama was? That you what? You see nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, that summarizes the whole ibadah. He doesn't have to tell you amilu salihat or anything. Because amilu salihat, you may do amal salih. Salih it is. But you didn't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. So it's salih to you. Salih in the sense of valid, not salih to Allah in the sense of complete. Huh? That's why Allah says, Inna qalu rabbuna Allahu thumma istaqamu. What's the result? Allah says, Tatanazzalu alayhimu al-malaika. Malaika will come down on them. Quran, this Quran. الملائكة تتنزل عليه الملائكة ألا تخافوا Don't be fearful 
Don't have any fear. وَلَا تَحْزَنُ And don't be sad. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ And wait for the Jannah that Allah has promised you. Not only that. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا We, the Malaika, are telling these people who are now are also awliya of Allah. Now, they're saying that to them, we are your awliya fi al dunya. Not only in the akhirah, wait, wait. Al-Malaika are telling these people, we are your awliya in the dunya. In the dunya before the akhirah. Nahnu awliya'ukum fi al-hayat al-dunya. Wa fi al-akhirah. And then also we will be with you in the akhirah. Yani as if Allah is telling you here, these people, the malaikah do not separate from them. Throughout the dunya, the barzakh, the akhirah, they're always with them. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فَعَلْنَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسِكُمْ يَا سَلَامِ And in it you have, yani in, in the akhirah, Some people say that means not only in the Akhira, both in the dunya and the Akhira. Why not? مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسَكُمْ But for the Akhira is more appropriate. In it you have that which your nafs desire. Whatever you want. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَتَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ This is the hadiyah from Ghafoor Rahim. Why? What is the jaza for what? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا These two things. You say, what do you mean istiqama? I just do, no, 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 istiqama. What do you mean istiqama? And you go the straight path. Istiqama, you don't see anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your whole line of life, which is a line of worship and a line of dunya, etc. طبعا هذا استقامة, we talk, we always, as we always say, we talk every station of the people who takes a salute to Allah subhanahu wa is on three levels always. For the beginners, the middle and the advanced. For the beginners, al istiqama is tawassut. Wasatiya. Wasatiya means what? Iqtisad, they say. Iqtisad means Iqtisad means moderation. 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 And moderation by definition means what? Not going extreme this way and not going extreme that way. What is extreme this way? Going extreme this way is by having self, self, uh, selfish intentions, not selfless intentions in what you do. Going this way is by what? By breaching the rules of knowledge. Ilm. Istiqama cannot breach ilm. And obviously cannot be insincere. Alright. So the beginners is moderation. Moderation means what? Yani in your ibadah, when you want to start doing istiqama, moderate. What do you mean moderate? Start with your fard. Start with your farm, perfect your farm. You know what happens. You get, I get that. Somebody says, Sheikh, no, no names obviously. Sheikh, you know, I have not been doing anything. You know, he, so he doesn't want to tell you the whole thing, or he tells you sometimes. And now I'm starting, alhamdulillah, last week, I'm doing the fara'id, the sunan, rawatib, nawafil. I pray every day now, 50, 40, 50 rak'ah almost. Moderation. I would rather you start with your fara'id and, and perfect them for your beginning up to be tawassut. That is where they say al-qalil al-da'im khayrun min al-kathir al-munqati' Qalil, little, that is continuous is much better than a lot that is discontinuous. He starts now praying and he wants to do, every day he wants to read half of the Qur'an lasts with him half a day, half a week, two weeks, and then he runs back to the old days. And to do one page of the Quran a day and remain consistent on that. Istiqama is 
then ihdina sirat mustaqim for the beginner is that you start with moderation and that's why allah said huh? iqtisad here in a sense we're talking about huh iqtisad means moderation that's why allah said for quran karim bismillah ar rahim fa minhum muqtasidun fa minhum muqtasidun wa minhum sabiqun bil khayrat minhum muqtasid wa minhum sabiqun bil khayrat some of them are muqtasid shuf iqtisad means what they're moderate Women whom sabbat. Some of them are ahead, but you can't get ahead yet. It's gradual. That's how it works. If you start putting so much on yourself from the beginning, you don't last. But you go in moderation. Now I'm not saying that one should not do good things. You should do good things. But every for likulli maqam in maqal. Every station has its needs and its capacities and its requirements so you can move from it to the next. Even you have capacitation. Now, so the point is that one, remember the hadith, hadith Sahih, Sahaba came to the Prophet, hadith Sahih, Sahaba came to the Prophet Sallallahu they said, Ya Rasulullah, so and so will not, they will spend the whole night not sleeping. The other one, so and so, will always fast every single day. Other one said, so I will not, they will not marry women at all. So they will devote themselves all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Intentions are what? Good or bad? What kind of people are we looking, talking about? Sahaba. Those are Sahaba. Huh? Sahaba have the best of intentions or not? In the best of generations or not? In the best of time or not? In the best of city or not? In the best of environment, the best of teachers, everything is around them. Iqtisad faminhum muqtasid. Al istiqama requires first you go into muqtasid. Then you become like Abu Bakr. You can't become like Abu Bakr like this. Doesn't work. I'm not saying it doesn't work. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does whatever He wills. We're just talking about the norm. You may wake up and you become like Abdul Qadir al Jilani. MashaAllah, you know everything. Possible? Technically, possible. Because Allah can do whatever He wills. Is it usually? Usual? No. Do you have to work hard? Very hard. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what does he tell them? He brings them, he summons them, he says to them, look, I sleep and pray. I fast and break my fast. And I marry women. Those who don't, who don't do my sunnah, they're not from me. What is he trying to tell? What is he telling them? And what is he telling us? He's telling us that what? Moderation. This deen is deen of moderation. It's not extreme this way. It's not extreme that way. It's not how many times you sit and you go to a, on top of a mountain and you do istighfar million times every minute, every second of the day. I am not saying you cannot do that. All I'm saying is it's not always about a, the quantity. It's the quality. But not only about the quant balance, balancing a quantity and quality, it's the sunnah that is the frame of the best way to him. But do we understand each other? I don't want you to say it's quantity versus quality. So let me let me make a moderate. No, no, no. The moderation is not quantity versus quality. Sometimes it's both. And sometimes it's this or that. The moderation or the way it is the prophetic sunnah. The prophetic sunnah is the one that's going to get you there. So put the quantity and the quality in the back in a bit. I just put that as an example. So that's important. So for the beginners then the first thing is what? The first thing is of the istiqamah. The level of istiqamah is to do what? Perfect your basics. Perfect your basics. Perfect your basics. Huh? Yeah, and you see that and, and, and what happens when people don't and they overtake what gets to them 
you know, you're trying to build a building, a huge building with no foundation. Guess what happens? Collapses usually. Collapses. Doesn't last. Usually. Huh? So, what happens usually with people? Those who want to build right away. So they return to the deen, alhamdulillah, and return to practicing the deen. And now they start, and now he, he puts himself all of a sudden. You've seen them, I'm sure, especially with some young brothers, Allah bless them. Yeah? Yeah, he, from one extreme, now the beard is to the knees. Imam already seven floors. And reading the books and everything, and if you do this, a'udhu billah, what are they going to do? Wait, 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 wait. What did that do to you? That took you out of the point of disciplining yourself and having istiqama yourself. Now you thought because of the few weeks that you actually did some, some what you perceived as is istiqama, now you went beyond the level of istiqama, you thought you were the judge, and you thought now everybody needs to do what you are doing right this second, which three weeks ago was totally different. So now that took you where? From one extreme of doing nothing to having nothing built. Now you breached an extreme of breaching knowledge and the sunnah to now breaching the sincere intentions and selflessness. So now yourself, your nafs came into this and your nafs became the judge of other people. You ruined yourself from the beginning and your end, you also ruined yourself. Right. It happens, you see that. Huh? Yeah, I mean, immediately after two weeks, the brother, brother becomes Abu Hanifa in person. <laughs> Measures. There's no problem in this diqam. And if it's haqiqa and haq, no problem. That can? The moderation of the sunnah. Now, that's for the for the beginners. For the middle-level people, it is not the istiqamah of, of being steadfast on a moderation, steadfast or steadfast on moderation. It's the istiqamah of hal. Not istiqamah of a'mal. We've talked about istiqamah of a'mal now. It's that your amal has istiqamah. So that you don't see anything but Allah and you go in moderation. The second level here for the middle people is the istiqamah of ahwal, not istiqamah of a'mal. What do you mean istiqamah of ahwal? Hal. Hal, we mean, what does hal mean? Spiritual state. What do you mean? Why what is hal important? Tab'an hal is important. Yani why do you think Allah tells you in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wasjud wa qutarib. Huh? Wasjud wa? Yeah, what do you think sujood is? Hal or ahwal or amal? Amal. Sujood is amal or not? What is qurb? Hal or amal? Hal. Hal by definition. What is the Quran telling you? Your amal, if it's good, it's going to get you a hal with Allah, which is what hal? That sujood will get you qurb of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do sujood, you, get, you become qareeb. Huh. So first you do the istiqamah of, of amal, and then you do the istiqamah of hal. What is the istiqamah of hal? The istiqamah of hal is that you witness the haqiqah, meaning you witness the reality, witnessing it, that it is not something you earned first. What do you mean you witness a haqiqah that it's not something you earned? All right, so you did sujood. That sujood got you what? Qurb. Do you witness the qurb? You feel the qurb. You live the qurb. You experience the closeness of Allah. Jayir Jameel, very nice. Now you are witnessing a haqiqah. Your sujood is not a haqiqah. Closeness is a haqiqah. That haqiqah, when you witness it, you witness it 
out of the bounty of Allah as a gift given to you by Allah. You don't witness that you earned it because of your good sujood and perfected sujood and attempted over attempted to perfect and perfect your sujood. Once you witness these haqa'iq or these things as something you earned, then you're not witnessing anything but yourself. But you witness what? You witness that this haqiqah was the gift that Allah endowed you and granted you. Because you see, when you feel that you got there because you earned it, what do you mean you earned it? Earned means what? Your nafs earned it. I earned it. But a nafs is dhulmaniya. A nafs is what? Darkness. And al haqiqa is nuraniya. The haqiqa is nuraniya. Huh? It's not dark. It's illuminating. And there is no way the nur and darkness can be together. There's going to be either nur or darkness. If your nafs is there, there's no way you can see anything. Besides al haqiqa fardaniya, what does that mean, fardaniya? If you truly witness the closeness to Allah, that maqam does not allow anything next to it or with it. It's fardaniya. It's, it doesn't allow anything. You can't have that. It's not possible. All right. So, therefore, you don't think that after you did all you did, whether it's your salah or your siyam or your zakah or your hajj and all these things, or you got it because you earned it, and you, you know, you, you have that because you, you worked so hard and yeah, you, you earned it. La, what do you witness? You witness the haqiqah as a grant from Allah's generosity unto you, though you are unworthy of it. So now you're witnessing two things. The haqiqa of qurb, let's say in this example that I gave, and the haqiqa of ni'mah, that he gave you in the first place. Now there is another thing. Don't think that by saying that you witness the haqiqa that without yourself in it, that you earned it, that you really earned it anyway, you're just denying yourself. Do we understand each other? Don't think that I'm saying that, all right, well, you actually did it. You did the sujood or you did the uh, volunteering or you did the, the charity and you did the zakah and you did the sadaqah and you did all these things, but you're just denying self. And denying self will get you there. No, no, no. If you think so, you're also fooling yourself. Why? Who guided you to that? Who gave you the health so you can stand? Who sent you the messenger to teach you how to stand and how to give? Who sent you the books to tell you these things? Who put in you the will? Who facilitated for you to come? Who did all these things for you? Who do you think you're telling? Who are you telling that you earned? You actually are witnessing your ajiz before him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as truly is, and you realize that he is the one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who truly facilitated for you. You are realize, realizing the truth rather than you realizing your delusion. So don't think just because you did the effort that you actually did the effort. It's him, Jalla Jalalu, who capacitated you to do the effort in the first place, who guided you to do the effort in the first place, who facilitated for you to do the effort in the, fir in the first place, who empowered you to do the effort in the first place, who guided you with messengers and books and everything else, and even intention to facilitate for you that. And help and, 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 remove the barriers and remove the veils and removed and removed and removed, so you could do it. So you're not doing him a favor by saying, you know, I got there, I'm so I'm gonna, by the time I'm, because I got there now, I want to deny myself, so I witness your ni'mah upon me. No, no, no. You came now to a realization of haqiqah. That's why I say, the haqiqah is nuraniya. It's the reality is illuminating. It accepts no darkness next to it. You realize that. Now, 
before the haqiqah, there is nothing of you left. That's why you start with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alright? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa Alameen. That's the, for the middle, again, for the middle people also, they denounce the claim, a claim of knowledge. <coughs> Not because of ilm. What you mean, you denounce a claim of knowledge not because of ilm. So first, you denounce that you got, you, you, you denounce yourself when you witness. Now here, you deny, denounce any claim of you and not because of ilm. What does that mean? When people don't know anything, the first thing they learn, they go and flex their muscles on other people. Showing them how much they don't know and how much they know. Especially when you learn a couple of little things. Yeah, do you know this hadith? You don't know me? Oh man, you are so jahi. Do you know this one? Oh, you don't know? Oh, let me tell you this one. He just had one five minutes ago, he didn't know. That's at the beginning. Now, the more the person learns, the less he objects. The less you learn, yani the more ignorant we are, the more we object. And the more knowledgeable we are, usually the less we object. Again, that's within reasonable parameters. So the more the person learns, the more he claims knowledge. The less the person knows, the more he claims knowledge. I know. I know is a big word, huh? I know is a big word. That's why there's, you know, it's nice that you can say in English, I know. Huh? You can say, I know, K-N-O-W, or I know, N-O. I know. You know, la, nothing yet. I really don't know anything. That's the reality. So, anyway. The more the person knows, the more they, they stay away from the claim of alim or mufti or knowledgeable. They try to stay away from that. The, more, the less they know, the more they say, hey, you know, you don't respect the people of ilm and ulama. You know? Once they really start getting to the level of knowledge, true, deep, profound, comprehensive, encompassing knowledge, a content, right? Dean is content. So you have, let's say, this content of knowledge. You, you, you pretty much have an idea of the content. Not a couple of words here and there. Not that you read that. Remember, I may have told you this. One of my sheikh asked me, how much did you read? And how many books did you read in the room of Lula? 70, 80 books. How many shaykh you read? 2,000. 2,000. Not reading like a newspaper. No? Nowadays we have a couple of these kids who read three, three booklets, not books, huh? booklets in English about Aqidah. And he says, I am a Shari, I am a Thari, I am a... Uh, and uh, you are Muqallid at best. And then... Uh, hmm? And then... Uh, yeah. Wallahi la'ihi khalqi shu'un, wallahi wallahi. Allow judgments on people, issuing fatawa already on people, oh, mashallah, opinions, or writing, or authorship. Authorship, huh? If you write books, everything. We start by, you know, we said like, you know, start with Ustad, after a few months, Ustad becomes Sheikh, after a few months, Sheikh graduates, becomes Sheikh of Islam, and then, Imam Zaman, and you know, the, on, the one and the only. And that, you know, the, the referencing, the benchmark. I've heard also these things in the UK, Allah save you, save us as well. 
so, so and so human being, human being, and a human being from this year, or this century, or past century, or two centuries ago. This is the benchmark of Sunnism. Ajib, I said, what happened to Abu Sadiq? And if anybody you want to say benchmark of Sunnism, maybe Sayyidina Abu Bakr, maybe. Though the benchmark of Sunnism is not none but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That's the benchmark of Sunnism. Rather in the sense, yani, if you mean by benchmark, the standard. No standard we have in Islam after the Sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi. Every single Sahabi and every single human being after that must be applied to that standard that's unequivocal and consistent. We don't have multiple standards, we only have one. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan this is the standard. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa azwajihi wa sallam wa kulluhum min rasulillahi multamison when the son of rasulullah comes little stars don't show there's no place for them because the son of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shines everything and anyway all these little stars, little orbits, little moons they only take from the nur of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah asked us to guide people to his Rasul and to him. So we be careful. The more people know, the more they deny knowledge. Usually. I don't know. Why do you see in the fatawa of the big ulama, even though now the so-called muftis, which is, became a title as well today, which in the Arab world, alhamdulillah, we don't have that. I know it's a subcontinent thing. Well, they, there's the word title mufti after whatever, depending on the course. Not to disregard anybody. Like in Islam, we don't have that in the Arab world. In the Arab world, it's a political. It used to be a, an academic position where one of the most knowledgeable person in the madhab would be nominated by scholars of the same caliber to be the mufti of Somalia or the mufti of Syria or the mufti of Yemen. One person, the whole land. Now, mashallah, we have so, you know, it became a little course, we do it a few years, 10 years or 15 years, I don't know what it is. Our Sheikh, Sheikh Ahmed Al-Hamid, our Grand Sheikh, Rahmatullahi Alayh, a Hanafi scholar in Syria, used to tell the students, Sheikh Said Hawa used to say that, shame on you, you call yourself a Hanafi student and you only studied 30 years, not a student, Maulana, we need to tell him now he died, Rahmatullahi Alayh, now we need to tell him in the grave, Maulana, it's not a student, now Mufti. Anyway, yeah. so these things, alhamdulillah, we, yeah, we don't need to bother with these things much. They don't mean anything in the sense of reality of the deen. Not these titles and others, even title of sheikh or all these things, these things are not institutionalized by the deen. Huh? People who know Ahlul Ilm, they serve and we love Ahlul Ilm and we respect them and we have Husan Dhan in them all and that's it. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, everybody does. Like in the more people know, the more they stay away from the titles. You don't see Imam Abu Hanifa saying when he signs a, 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 a book, where he writes a book, for example, he says Al-Imam Abu Hanifa or Al-Mufti Abu Hanifa. You don't see that. Huh? You don't see that. You don't see Shafi'i saying Al-Imam Al-Shafi'i Nasir Al-Sunnah. You see Abu Hanifa saying Abu Hanifa. You see Imam Shafi says Muhammad bin Idris Shafi. Ghafar Allah, may Allah forgive him. Hmm? That's what you see. This is the Salaf. Huh? No, Sama, this, this, all these things. Khair, regardless, Allah help us all. We all have mistakes and shortcomings, so we need to work. Therefore, in the old days, you see, Wallahu ta'ala a'la. So the big ulama, the big imma, the more knowledge they have, they go to their, what they do, what they defer the knowledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they're asked, they say, this is what we know, and Allah knows best. This is what we know, and Allah knows best. This is what we know, and Allah knows best. So, now, istiqama, so that we can get back on our topic. And istiqama for the middle people is when you deny knowledge, not because knowledge. What does that mean, not because knowledge? 
because knowledge tells you you should deny knowledge to yourself. Once you know, you know how much you don't know. Once you know, you know how much you don't know. If you don't know, you think you know everything. Like, and once you really know, you know how ignorant you truly are. So therefore, you deny knowledge. You don't want to take that responsibility. Huh? So, but here on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the denial of knowledge, not because of knowledge. No. Knowledge tells you you should deny knowledge because you don't know. Denial of knowledge because you are in istiqamah with Allah. So you are witnessing Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How dare you when you witness Him supposedly claim anything anyway? It's not knowledge that's making you denounce your knowledge. It's the witnessing of Allah. You're worshiping Him as if you're seeing Him. That makes you denounce that and deny it and put it aside because there's no space and place for it in your heart anyway. How can you claim anything else while you are trying to be witnessing Him subhanahu wa ta'ala in your shuhud, in your hal, in your haqiqah? The other thing is also for the middle people before we move and finish is that your istiqama is with the nur of presence. What do you mean nur of presence? Presence with who? What is istiqama? Istiqama is to be with who? To be with Allah. Right? Being with Allah is illuminating or not? Illuminating. Huh. Persistence on istiqam, but without effort. Well, what do you mean without effort? How can I persist on istiqama without effort? This is again for the middle people, not for the beginners. Usually in order for you to try to persist on being present with Allah is very is, is, is cumbersome on, on people, on the beginners, and many people, they come and say, look, I can't even do it with the Salah. In the Salah, I try to be with Allah for one second, and 99.9% .9 of the Salah, I'm away from Allah. I try so hard, I can't. So how come here for the middle people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say, you are always in the presence of Allah without effort, effortlessly. How is that possible? Because those people already walked through the steps again. So at the beginning you're doing the effort, but to the middle without the effort. Why? Huh. It's one thing that you are mukhlas. It's another that you are mukhlas. Remember what Allah said? Illa ibadaka minhum al? Huh? مخلصين. Iblis is telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will misguide all of your slaves, illa, except the slaves of yours, ya Allah, المخلصين. not مخلصين. مخلصين. مخلصين means what? Comes from ikhlas. Ikhlas means what? Sincere. Iblis is telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means I will misguide all your slaves, including the sincere ones. <clears throat> Except the mukhlasin, those I can't misguide. Who are the mukhlasin? They're not the ones who actually worked on being sincere. They're those whom Allah purified Himself. It's one thing that you purify yourself, you become mukhlas. When Allah purifies you, you are mukhlas. He chose you and purified you. So as Iblis is saying, that he will misguide all of the slaves of Allah, including those who are sincere, but those who you made sincere, you granted sincerity and pulled them out, those I cannot misguide. 
So, similarly here, that you remain, persevere with the illuminating presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because of you, but because He pulled you to be. Remember when people, our people sometimes they say, I went to Hajj, I was invited. Huh? And they say, you know, I, I, I was invited to It's one thing you are trying to be present with him. It's another, he's not, in, he's not letting you go away from him. His ri'aya and himaya and lutf, his kindness and special care of you is surrounding you. So even if you fall, lapse into ghafla, he wakes you up in a nice way and keeps you with him. May Allah put us in that ri'aya khasa. This is a special ri'aya. Mm -hmm. But how do you get there? You get there by kasm and by dua. So you try to be present first with effort. And you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to parole you in that where He gravitates you towards Him. He pulls you towards Him. But that requires lots of shedding of lots of self until that selflessness state becomes ready and pure. The last level and the most advanced level of istiqam and we'll stop here is that you don't no longer see istiqam. Istiqam as well. Is the path to Allah that you, th that you see nothing else but Him in it, correct? Well, if you're already there, you don't see, there's no more path to be seen. If you're already there, there's no more path to be seen. So you are in awe of the presence of the manifestation of the presence, or the, the presence of the manifestations of the effects of the uh, or the, uh, the effects of the attributes of Allah and His presence in a way that's suitable to Him, you are in awe of that and the glory and the beauty of that, that you are no longer seeing that you are going on a path because there's no more path, you're already there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us among them and now you realize what Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُ those who say Allah, our Lord, then did istiqama, tatanazzalu alayhim al malaika. Obviously, I mean, if they are present with Allah, you know, the malaika are a creation anyway. They bypass that anyway, in a sense. Allah taqafu wa la tahzanu wa abshiru bil jannah lati kuntum tu'adun. Nahnu awliya'ukum fil hayat al dunya wa fil akhira. Wa lakum fiha ma tashtari anfusukum wa lakum ma tadda'un. Etc., etc., etc. From these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, haqqana bihadihi al maqama, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Are there any questions? Go ahead. You were mentioning that no one has seen Allah, and you know, particularly I'm talking about why you have prayed so long. As if. There's no seeing, as if. Right. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you, and ta'amud Allah ka'anna katara. You worship him as if you're seeing him. Seeing him is not possible. So what we should be envisioning, you know, what, I mean, human beings, you know, we, that you are in his, that, that observing that you're being observed. That he's observing you. You are in his presence. Without imagining, imagining.